Who sang for him? Well, when I got there, was it was the um, ceremony, the, um, the spiritual partner. Uh -huh. I, was, I didn't reach to the start. But somebody, yeah, fan, 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 fan. but it was more, it wasn't like Shadow. Shadow was a show. <laughs> Shadow's funeral was no funeral. Shadow, it had men selling beers in bucket. Like, like a normal show, this is about that. So, yes. Man selling beer, bucket, water, nuts, man pelting nuts all over the place. It was like a show. You know, like you go to the Savannah for a show, but the first one was more solemn and, you know, at the uh, cathedral and independent spirit. Get up close and personal with Galen and the ultimate DJ Shane every Thursday from 9pm to 11pm. Two good friends, bam bam, one behind the other. So both of them will win to stand, eh? And Sunday, Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, I had explain that here. He's an ex-win star. He said, David. That four with Sanic Cali. Two goals, you know. He said, Gypsy changing into silver seven years. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to call myself yet. But Gypsy don't change it into seven. Claus, how are you? I hope you stay on for the entire program, cuz. Charlie! Christmas in Trinidad and Tobago is full of traditions. This is how we celebrate it. So, Gypsy changing him. <laughs> the Gypsy changing him to Selwyn. <laughs> yeah, but I can't come up with that name yet, boy. <laughs> and Sparrow outlasting all of them, boy. Yeah, boy, Stalin too. Stalin turned baby, I can't have that stroke, you know. When I went to see Stalin, I nearly cried. At least we did a show, and a group called the FOYTT. Friends of the Youth of China, they host the, the national. Um, Extempo Junior Competition. So we, we celebrated Stalin and we celebrated Shadow. Uh -huh. We only celebrated Stalin in Sapala and so We crowded, you know, people love Stalin. We crowded, we waited to hear Black Man, we did our party, and the play all the people singing all the music and things. When they bring in Stalin, the place get quiet. And I watch on so many people crying. And Stalin, like a real baby, you know, like, like a real baby boy. But you come from now, eh? He's standing up now. He's making one or two steps now, I think. But he's still in the, in, in the bamboo. Mm. And the whole longer was there, right? there is more than two years now. You know? Yeah. We just started to cry. I, I couldn't even talk. I, was the, I, was, I didn't even see that show. I cried because I don't know how to make that. Damien Melville had seen that show. Then we did shadow. We did shadow in China, and then we did shadow in Tobago. But they say I know we do it. <laughs> they were thinking about roast this thing. You know, but it'd be a nice thing to do, eh? But the more the youth, eh? But they recognize these icons that nobody seems to be recognizing. Yeah. And in Tobago, shadow to me. He said, you know, how long I go last, and I'm feeling good these days, and I'm going. I say I would worry like you. I said, just beat them for me when they when they whip from hell, but I. Everything will be all right. Are we black? We were very close, eh? That was it, boy. That was it, boy. That, I shake up my tail, but quite close to them, kind of soon, anyway. Uh -huh. I'm like my extended family, bro. Jesus Christ, that one shake me up. I get weak. <laughs> I didn't know what to do when I, when I get. I tell them, imagine after. Okay, when. They had a, a benefit concert for, 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 for Eddie Foster at City Hall. We went there, he had the performance, everything was cool. But he, he was telling me that his doctor told him, don't do this kind of performance again, tomorrow can be hard. But you know them kind of fella. They come and shadow come and die. And they had a show, for that. go in there for that. And in the Savannah, he come in the Savannah too. Yeah. He came in the Savannah too. About three days after? Yeah, boy. And look at that. 
And then the last interview he did was the week before on with men in mind. And I invited him, man. Because you know that they are taking away all the time I have to call it something. I said, well, buddy, you know you could come on this. If you come on that thing on my show, I said, I'll tell you, know, man. You know everybody like you. So he came. And Jay, man, I have it on Facebook. And he has it saved. And he played back last night. But he didn't play the whole thing. Where he was talking. And all he was talking about is the people in coming together and the government and them moving this and they're moving that, you know, so that will be that will be good. That will be good. But boy, I tell you, I told the man in Charlotte, you know, I say, but what the hell is this boy? When I did that, I see my phone buzzing, buzzing. I said, my boy, I need for us to pass away, boy. All sleep go on this. I said, what the hell I hear? I can't believe that. Yeah, boy, that is my bad boy. Ready? We're looking at just about nine minutes past the seven. Dr. Raj is back with us. Sex Explosion Thursday starts now. Good evening, Dr. Raj. Good evening. How are you? Nice to have you back in studio, man. I'm good. Uh huh. Well, I went to. We'll have to say condolences yeah. to the Calypso fraternity. Yeah. Our entertainers. We are losing them one after you. the other. It's right. it's um, a very sad time for us mm -hmm. who love Calypso and those who um, appreciate the art form. And, and it happened within and Very just close, in the, yeah. the frills of Calypso History Month. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even so, more in the mix. Yeah. 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 So I know they're very close to you, so that's yes. why I'm extending condolences to Yes, I thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're here to talk about sex explosion and sex. Um, before we get into that, um, there are some things that I want to touch on. First and foremost, we... Um, we have to remind all those who are interested in the investment portfolio mm -hmm. um, to deal dealing with the expansion of the adult business in Trinidad and Tobago. We enter in phase two. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are interested in um, becoming a shareholder, yeah. get in touch with me and find out about phase two. I like that and store. Phase, I phase like two. That store you like the store? Advertise on the highway. I like the kind of clothes, apparel. I mean, don't say clothes. Uh -huh. The apparel. The apparel. I see on the mannequins. <laughs> It's inviting. <laughs> yes. Well, um, the store, that's the flagship store. Mm -hmm. So that will give anyone an idea of what it is about, what the yes. vision is about. Right. So when you go and you go upstairs into the store itself, mm -hmm. then you see what it really is like. Aside, yeah, you should do that. You know, yeah. instead of instead of going past, you, yeah. you just make it to the roundabout and you get, you yeah, know. It's easy. It's easy. And then to get back to the highway to head south, it's very easy. easy. So um, that's going on, and I have to thank my supporters and those who are who are appreciative of what I'm doing for their continued um, support yeah. at the store, you know, and seeing them come in there from time to time, and the girls telling me who is there and what what you know what they're doing. Some of them patronize the business, and it's um, something that I appreciate very much. Yeah. But for those who want to invest, we're going into phase two. Well, the and we're moving south. And the revolution of times. Yes, yes, yes. It puts it in the perfect place. Right. So we're moving south now. <laughs> But Good. we into another phase, something else that we're doing, um, creating a website oh. that will be highlighting all these things, all these accomplishments, radio program. We have a blog. We have a question and answer segment We have um, where you can actually join. Mm -hmm. we'll, be selling, um, we'll be selling stuff on the website also. Okay. So um, right now we're looking for advertisers for the website. Um, for those of you who want to take a look at the website, just go to www drrajtt.com drrajtt.com very easy drrajtt.com take a look at the site it's being developed right now so don't look for the final product yes, yes. the final product will be on I think in about 10 days time mm -hmm. but right now we are developing the product we are doing you know a home page we have a census page we have an advertising page we have banners we have those who want to lock down their, their logo on the, on the home page we're doing all of that. So anyone out there with a business who wants, and it's very cheap. Mm -hmm. The advertising is very affordable. It works out to be dollars. It works out to be cents per day. Cents. Mm -hmm. Literally cents per day. Because I'm not, it's, we're not doing it for, as a money-making venture. We're doing it as something that will reach a wider public, a, a worldwide public, yeah. so that um, anyone, anywhere in the world will see your product. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the advertisers are piggybacking on my name. Because I'm, I'm pushing the name Dr. Raj throughout. And we are actually doing some things outside of Trinidad and Tobago. Right now I'm in negotiation with um, someone outside of Trinidad and Tobago to do a store. 
So we're building. We're building. I don't know what's going to happen next year, but from what I'm seeing, there is a lot that is taking place and a lot that is going to happen over the next year or so. Um, those who want to come on board, come on board. You can go on the side, just look at it, make your comments, send me a WhatsApp message on my cell phone number. If there is something that you see that you think that we could improve upon or something that you want to see on the site, because we even have in a section, you know, a lot of times people call the program or they will call me and send me a message and say, I'm looking for a, a companion. I'm looking for someone, you know, um, my, I'm, a, I'm a widower or widower and I want to get a companion and I want to find... I am not in the matchmaking business, but we will have that on the site also. Okay. That sounds good. So a person could put their information on the site. Mm -hmm. Another person could go on and look for it mm -hmm. and find, you know, who knows who's going to meet who on the site. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, there's so many aspects to the site that right now I can't tell you about everything. And one day I'm going to have the person who's developing the site come on the, the program and mm -hmm. actually talk about it. But... For the advertisers, for those who have their businesses, their little uh, mom and pop shop or whatever, you may have a big company or whatever and you want to advertise on the site, that's what we're offering also. You can put your banners, you can put your logo, you can go onto the advertising page and put all your different products. And it's something that is going to work for you because we, once we get the, the, the site done fully and we have established that it, this, these are the things that we want to project, the marketing part of that is going to blossom. It's going to boom. It's going to, we're going to have it all over. So persons are, they are going to want to go to it. And of course, we have all the thousands of listeners out there who, some of them are computer savvy. And of course, you can go on your, your smartphone right now and just type it in www.drrajtt.com and you see the information pops up in front of you. And there's all the different sections that you can actually go into. We'll be doing, we'll be doing blogs. We'll be doing um, video chats. We'll be doing um, I, I even doing consultation via that. Okay. So if those who cannot come to me, you can actually buy time, buy my time on that and get a full consultation done. So if a person is in Tobago, I don't want to come to Trinidad, don't want to go through the hassle of coming to Trinidad, he or she just go on their computer or go on their smart device, book a time, put your credit card in. We come on. I do the full consultation on the phone through Skype or, or not, through the site, sorry, mm -hmm. and I send you whatever you're looking for right. or whatever you need. And the follow-ups are there also. As a matter of fact, we're making the first couple of minutes free. Because as I said, it is all about reaching a wider public. So a person, is, let's say if a person is in point 14 and they don't want to travel to come to St. Augustine, yeah. they can now go to a friend's home, they can go onto their smart device, they can go on their PC and do a consultation with me. So anybody, anywhere worldwide, I'm doing it worldwide also because I have a lot of clients from all over the world. I have persons who work on, on cruise ships and sometimes they dock at a, at a port and they ask me what they can get at that port. So I will tell them, go to whatever section, I'll tell them, send me the photographs. It's, it takes a little time, but I, I assist them in that way. I say, okay, this product, I look at it, I, I tell them, okay, send me the ingredients. I look at the ingredients and say, yes, this will work for you. Get it, use it, get back in touch with me. So there's no way I am making money from that. But the point is I'm still helping someone out here. Yeah. Or he or she now will be able to tell someone else. And that's what it's all about, connectivity throughout the world. So when somebody hears about Dr. Raj in New York City, like my cousin who works in New York City, you know, he drives, he, he drives a limousine in, in New York City. Yeah. He tells people about the program. They listen to the program. And he can also tell him, well, here what, if you want consultation, you can go on to the site, register immediately, make a book an appointment, and I, 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 I will correspond with you. So that's how I, what we're doing. We're trying to take it into a, a new era, a different way of doing it. I have friends all over the world, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Saudi Arabia, different places. So all I do is connect with them, let them know, do the marketing. So the product that you're selling... Let's say you have a product that is indigenous to Trinidad and Tobago, but you want to get it out there, or you want to get the name out there. That is another way of getting the name out there. A person who has a product in Trinidad and he's trying to sell it locally, and he don't want to spend a whole set of money with the advertising campaign, you could immediately on that website, and we're giving you all the backup information, you know, how many people visited your site. Every month we're going to give you a report. We can even monetize, monetize it where we, we show you how much money you're making out of the site. Because, of course, that, that requires a feedback from you to us. So there, there, are, there are lots of things concerning the site, and that's something I want to do. Now, what I did tonight is um, I asked...
the my the persons that I have on on my WhatsApp because I have a, about a thousand persons who I send broadcasts out for, and I ask them. I say, please send me topics or questions that you want answered on the program. So I'll I'll deal with some of them. Question: Re NPD narcissistic personality disorder could it such a disorder in a man be cured? Help to revamp a marriage. I'm a regular listener to the program. It's informative. God bless you. I, I, I tackled this question before, about maybe a month ago, we were dealing with it. Narcissistic personality disorder is not an easy thing to deal with. Um, first of all, the person must be willing to transform themselves because that, this, this narcissistic behavior means that you're all about yourself. And it will affect your relationship because if you're in a relationship and you're not giving, and it's never 50-50. Anytime a person says, I must give 50% and expect 50%, it's not going to work that way. Your relationship is all about giving, maybe giving a little to get a lot or giving a lot to get a little. But it is giving. Mm -hmm. So it, sometimes it might be 10-90 or 90-10, 20-80, 80-20. It could be any one of those fractions broken down, but you have to know what you're giving to the person. It has a lot to do with how you feel about the person. It has a lot to do about your personality. It has a lot to do about the relationship. Remember when two persons get together, it's two entities to create one entity. The relationship is one entity. Too many times we focus on what it's all about for me. And we're only interested in what is happening to me. If we make it about me as opposed to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where the difficulty comes in. That's where I know some, some relationships where um, uh, the woman would say, um, the man's supposed to do this. And as the man, he's supposed to do this. You know, and, uh, there are things that you're supposed to do, yeah. but anytime somebody demanding certain things out of you and saying that you are supposed to do this, their expectation might be a little too high, and that could cause problems also. Mm -hmm. Because it all depends. You know, someone was asking me a question today about a mother and son relationship, yeah. and they were comparing that with yeah, another mother and son relationship. And I told them if that's the, if that's the model that they have, if that's the, the mold that they're seeing, that's what they're going to transfer from one to the other. And this is what people do. When you get married to someone, you don't have a manual. No one gives you a manual and says, this is the way it's going to be. Sometimes sometime you get guidance prior to getting married. Some persons go to, for guidance prior to getting married. But when you are married, all the guidance and everything that you have given you can give you some sort of comfort. But remember, you're living with the person. And the personality of the individuals will determine the behavior within that relationship. So it's what you do now. Sometimes you have to bend a little to get something out of the relationship. Sometimes you have to give a little more to get some a little bit out of the relationship. You have to know to adjust. you got to know to adjust. You know, I don't gamble, per se. I will never go in a casino. Well, I, will, I wouldn't say never, but I will not go to a casino and take money out of my pocket on a table. I don't believe in that. I'll buy a little lotto and whatnot. But I gamble in business. Because I believe if you create a business, if you create a means of employment, service. selling, service and whatnot, it's your baby. And you now have to take your time, effort and energy to make that baby grow. Mm -hmm. And a baby will grow up to be a young man or a young woman. So the more energy you put into it and the more things you put into it, your ideas and whatnot, it will blossom. That's why persons defend their business. Whatever business, if you have a parlor on the side of the road, it doesn't mean to say you're less important than a guy who has a, a furniture store mm -hmm. because you're putting the same amount of effort or even more so to make your little thing grow. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is that you're developing that. The same thing with a relationship. You put your efforts into the relationship and this unit that you've created, which is us, is where you have to make that now develop and blossom. Lots of time, if it's all about me, 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 it's not going to blossom because eventually the person on the other end, the other person who is part of that relationship is going to get fed up. He or she is going to say, wait a minute, it, this person is making it all about themselves. Yeah. What about me? What about the relationship? What about what we want for the future? Mm -hmm. What's happening with that? What's going on? Why can't we discuss these things? Sometimes we don't take the time to even discuss it because you're so self-centered and you, you're so engrossed in yourself that you have no care of the other 
and other things. So even if you go for counseling and you go to someone to help you to overcome these things, if you are not willing to make the little changes, to make that, to make that step forward, to walk away from this, who, this focus of, on the I as opposed to the us, you have to walk towards the us and make that stronger as opposed to the I. But lots of time we have difficulties there. Mm -hmm. Even in a non-narcissistic type of relationship, you have that happening. So could you imagine in a relationship where the person is self-centered like that? Mm -hmm. What would happen? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you have to do and those are the things that you have to look at. And let's see, uh, my good, um, one of our regular listeners and he's outside of Trinidad. Hey doctor, if men are visual creatures, when it comes to sex, how does a blind man get his groove on? That's a very good question. Yeah. I'm asking because I have a good friend who lost his sight due to diabetes. Mm -hmm. Remember when you lose one of your senses, you have five senses. The other four senses are enhanced. So when you lose the sight, your sight senses, mm -hmm. the other four senses will enhance such as touch, taste, smelling and hearing. And because we are visual creatures, men are usually visual creatures, that has shut down, but it does not mean to say we cannot imagine. Imagination is insight, you know. Imagination is not only seeing. So when you hear something now, you get a smell of something, you touch something, your imagination goes. And if you have lost your sight, you were able to see prior to that, what beauty was all about or what sexual beauty for you was all about. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine whether it is so or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The same way when you, a, a young man is masturbating, he used images in his mind to create a scenario, whatever the scenario may be. That's not reality. Mm -hmm. It's imagination at work. Yeah. So when a person has lost vision, they cannot see. They have not lost the vision within themselves. So the insight is there. And they're able to imagine. So that, that's a form of a um, meter, no? Um, easier than someone who's born blind? Yes. Yes. It's much easier. Because you already have things to put together to make it work. Mm -hmm. Those who are born blind can only use their imagination or but they don't have a reference. Mm -hmm. But they still can use their imagination. And they still have, ha have heightened senses. But also with the heightened senses, you have heightened sexual desires because the desire sexual desires are tied to your senses that's why disability i did a i did a number of program on disability and and, and sexual orientation or sexual behavior and it blew people mind away because they were thinking that if you lose some of your senses or if you're disabled it means you cannot have sex but that's not true you may have a, an, an enhanced sexual behavior and persons who are, I have got done many lectures to the Blind Welfare Association, and I can tell you from those lectures and interacting with individuals there and having friends who are eventually, be, they became my friends and they will come and check me and whatnot. I could tell you about their wants and needs and how enhanced it is. And if, I, I mean, it may not be scientific because I have not say, said, uh, let me go on look at 200 individuals who have lost their sight or who are blind, visually impaired, and let me find out about their sexuality and sexual behavior. But I can tell from those who have interacted with in my years of doing lectures to them and whatnot, I can tell you that there's a heightened sense of sexual being and there's nothing wrong with that. When persons frown upon that or when persons look at it and say, well, they should not be behaving that way. But why? My question will always be, well, why they should not be behaving that way? Because you say so? Because of your prudish nature or your understanding or your misunderstanding of the situation, you're going to say that we should not have that heightened sen sen sensuality and sexual sense. Mm -hmm. So this is where the misinformation comes in. Mm -hmm. Lots of time we think within the box and we don't want to step outside of it. But when you are involved in these things and you are actually interacting with individuals in different spheres and different segments of society, you see changes and you see differences and you understand fully well that even though a person is disabled it does not mean to say they're disabled from sexual behavior even a guy who has a serious injury to the spinal column 
you still find they may not be able to get an erection but they still have the sexual need and the sexual mm. feelings mm. and you wonder how come but then you have to understand the heightening the heightening of the other senses in the body and we are sexual beings regardless of what doesn't matter mm. we are sexual beings and we have to start seeing ourselves as sexual beings of course we are spiritual beings also so you have to know to marry both of them that sexual and spiritual side today for the very first time i paid attention to um, an interview i did with o omg and i didn't realize i give so much information about myself i was looking at it and say wait Raj, you, you you're selling out yourself <laughs> i mean for all the 18 years i've been on radio i've been doing that eh? yeah giving little bits and pieces of myself but to actually see everything concise into i think it was a 20 minute interview mm -hmm. and see all that information being given out about myself by myself and i was like wow i was impressed <laughs> i was impressed with myself Good. um not because of ego but i was impressed that i was able to get that information out there and hopefully people would take it for the right meaning and be able to say well wait a minute this man is brutally honest and that's one of the things that, that strike me, you know, why the hell I was so honest with about the same way? Mm. But then again, it's my personality and who I am. And then I did speak about spirituality. And the spiritual side is something that is very important to mesh with whoever you are, your physical being. You know, spirituality is not going to church, yeah. temple or mosque. Yeah. That is not spirituality. No. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is some of the things you talk about, the groups that you belong to, helping other people. That is spirituality. Spirituality is, you know, when you feel something for another, a compassion for another human being. I agree. Animals. That is a part of spirituality. A lot of persons don't understand that. They think that, oh, compassion is not tied into that, but it is tied into that, that spiritual side. And of course, the religious part of it is also important because then you have a grounding in religion, which will give you a certain level of morality and what we call dharma. And it's hard to explain dharma. For a Hindu, mm. we know what that means. Dharma is encompassing of a lot of different things. You know? And part of dharma is that, this, this, look today, I left my office to come to do the program. When I reached Bangladesh, you know where Bangladesh yeah. is in Kira? Yeah. I realized I left my wallet in my office. Mm. So I turned around and went back to my office. And there, at my office, was a good friend of mine visiting and asking for me. Hmm. And when I saw him there, I, I was like, wow. I, I said, I just come back from my wallet. He said, no, 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 no. Mm. He said, karma, you yeah. had to come back to me. Yes. Which is true. Yeah. But that's the spiritual side of it. Mm -hmm. I normally would have my wallet when I leave because I like to come, to, I like to, you know, I like to come to the studio 10, 15 minutes before, yes. hang out outside, go and check the guys in Boom Champion, come over here, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I still was able to do that. But when I thought I had to go back to my office yeah. to meet this guy, yeah. So these are the things that when, when you understand spirituality and you, it, it, it is no big deal. It's not, it, these things don't happen perhaps. Yeah. It happens because you, un, it, it is what you create out there in the world. Yeah, it's so true. I it, feel that way so many times. Yes. <laughs> well, only persons who have felt it would know what it is. Yeah. So you call it that karma. Karma. That is part of karma. Okay. Now karma. I understand. Dharma, dharma is your duty. Mm -hmm. Your duty. Your duty to man, your duty dharma. to yourself, duty to your family, yeah. duty to your religion, duty dot that's, that's your dharma. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Karma is the energy that you put out out there and the positive energies that you receive. Mm -hmm. That is karma. Well, like a lot of persons think that karma is they, they you know they say karma is a bitch and karma. Yeah. Karma is not. You are. <laughs> you are. That is not karma. That is you. Yeah, yeah. I have to understand these things because yeah. my, my daughter's boyfriend, mm -hmm. the families of that. You know, yes. So. I like to mingle. Of I course. And I ask questions. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I like, like that too. They tell me everything. I like them too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but you see, people who understand Hindus yeah. or, or Sanatanists, mm -hmm. they'll understand we are very open and, 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 and we're willing to share information. It's just that a lot of people, they block their minds from it. Yeah. Yeah. But I've seen many a times person use Hindu philosophy in the way they talk and they don't even realize that's what they're using. Mm -hmm. Because that philosophy does not philosophy does not belong to any other teachings. But yet still we use it in the Western world, but they don't understand what they're doing. The mere concept of karma, karma does not exist in any other belief system. It does not exist. It only exists there. So that's why we openly talk like that. We, we it, it's second nature to us. 
I'm not getting punched to information. Of course, uh, if, uh, you're supposed to be. Yeah, build something there. You're supposed Dharma, to be. Karma. Dharma and karma. Yeah, man. So, <laughs> um, when having sex and lose that bone hard erection, what causes that? That's erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction could come about because of many factors. One of the main factors, I just saw we had a group of individuals here who um, represented the Estate Constable Association. Association. Yeah. Estate Constable are plagued with this. And I'll tell you why. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not casting aspersion on anyone, but I'm telling you why. Anyone who works in an environment where you work shift, your body bio, bio rhythm goes out of sync. We are born with a bio rhythm in. We are born with a bio rhythm, and that bio rhythm is controlled by two things. The sun and the moon. Mm. Everything on this earth is controlled by the sun and the moon. And that is part of Dharma. Okay. Right? That's why Hindus worship the sun and the moon. We worship, we worship both. And we understand that everything, I don't know if you know of this, if you cut wood or bamboo at certain times of the month, it gets weevil or it rots very quickly. Yeah. Do you know why? It has to do with the moon phase. The same thing with fishing. Any fisherman will tell you that. Mm -hmm. The moon phase will determine the amount of fish that they will catch. Hunting. Hunters will tell you that also. Mm -hmm. Animals, when they will come out and when they will not come out. I planted a lot of vegetables. and Planting. Who I learned from spoke a lot about that moon thing. Yes. The moon, the moon control the tides. Mm -hmm. The moon and the sun controls us as human beings also. We are 75% water. Mm -hmm. If the moon controls the sea and the rivers, why it won't control us? So true. Think about it. Think logically. Mm -hmm. So when a man has erectile dysfunction associated with the, the change in his biorhythm, because we are born with this biorhythm, we know that night is for sleep, mm -hmm. day is for week. Night is when the body rejuvenates itself. And also in a male, it is when your testosterone gets to the highest point. That's why you wake up in a morning erection. There's no such thing as a pee stand. Yeah. If there was such a thing as a pee stand, every time you wanted to pee, you'll get a stand. Yeah. <laughs> a morning erection is an indication that in the morning your testosterone is the highest. Mm. That's why you have a morning erection. So men, I want you to get that into your head. There's no such thing as a pee stand. There's a morning erection. And if you stop getting morning erection, you have low testosterone. Mm. And don't go buy no tablet in no pharmacy and feel that you're going to raise your testosterone. It does not work like that. That's why when you see all these things advertised, no, there's a way to make money. Of course. And let me tell you that way to make money. The way to make money is to tap into something that a person is going to feel that they will be affected negatively by it. Or something that happens to them all the time and you make them feel it's bad. I'll explain it. Women have their period every month. Moon phase also. So some guys sit down and say, hey, what? Women have to have their period every month. Let's create a product for that. But let's create a product that is going to make it last longer. Mm -hmm. So that was the trick in it. And then after that, we'll tell them that it have to smell nice and rosy. We'll give, give them a water to wash it out. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we'll give them something else that they have to put to cover their vagina all the time. Mm -hmm. A vagina is not supposed to be covered all the time. It's supposed to breed. So they make a bunch of money from that. But you don't need all those things. Same thing with men. You see all these products being advertised for low T. They mm -hmm. call it low T, low testosterone. Yeah. And all these things. But it does not work if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If I have to treat you, David, with low levels of testosterone, and you have a partner who is 20 years younger than you, you feel like to treat both of you the same way? Mm. Absolutely not. No way. The reasons for your low testosterone will be different from your friend. Even though both of you are doing the same job, working the same hours, in the same place. Mm. There are things that you have to look at as a sexologist to treat each individual. Mm. There's also something in sexology that we call use it or lose it. There are a lot of men who don't use it. So they end up losing it. Because the organs in your body becomes lazy. You know? I used to be an IFBB judge. International Federation of Bodybuilding. When we judge in a bodybuilder, we don't judge 
whether they are using steroids or not. But we are trained to pinpoint who is using steroids or not. When you look at a bodybuilder on the stage and you look for certain traits like bitch tits, shrinkage of the scrotum and whatnot, you realize that that person is using drugs. When you inject steroids, which is testosterone, into your body over a period of time, do you know what happens? Your testicles, which is supposed to produce sperm and testosterone, shuts down. It gets lazy. So think about the organs that you're supposed to be using for sex. You don't masturbate. You don't bother to have sex. You prefer to sit down behind a bottle, mm. behind playing card. You have no sports in your life. You're not getting enough sleep because whole night you're playing card. What do you think is going to happen to you? The organ that you're supposed to be using for sex shuts down. It shuts down. You need to recharge it. There are men who get shrinkage of the penis because of low testosterone, not because of other use, but because of low testosterone. So there are many factors. I mean, I can't call all the factors here, but when I'm dealing with you professionally, I look at those factors. I look at certain tests before I can diagnose what you should be doing. I had one gentleman. He came to me in April, what, no, no, March of this year. And I told him I'll treat you, but it's going to take nine months. Mm. So okay. Took the treatment on the eighth month. He said, but I see no, what I'm looking for. Mm. So, okay. Let me um, take you through this last month. I sent him to do a test, he brought it back and he was disappointed with the test. But when I look at the test, I knew what it said because I know how to read it. He don't. I say, have faith in me for this one last month. He came and sat in front of me this week and he was like, you really know what? There's no shortcut to it. There's absolutely no shortcut. If you want to take a shortcut, you're going to end up in serious problems later on. And I'm not going to take you down the shortcut road because anytime... I fail you, I get bad name, not you. And I don't wonder. My reputation is number one. I always try to maintain that. Most of the persons who fail with treatment is because they don't go through with the entire treatment. Yeah. They don't take what they're supposed to be taking. They do their own thing or they supplement what I am giving them with something else. And like you said, there's so much on sale now. Oh, there are so many things that you could get. There are things that you can get on the internet. There are, there are guys who come in, come to see me and they bring a whole bag of stuff. Hmm. I've been using this, 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 and this. And I'm looking at them and say, you just blew your chances to fix yourself. And they're like, what? I said, all these things that you're taking here will cause you more harm than good. That's just about to ask you. I say, you need to flush your system out of this. Hmm. Right? and start all over and it's going to take you about two years to mm. get back where you're supposed to be yeah. but that's the truth of it guys who use cocaine and marijuana and, and, and hallucinogenic drugs and, and opiates and whatnot they experience shrinkage of their penis also and scrotum they lost their ability to have sex because their whole brain needs rewiring and whatnot to treat them is different much different guys who are addicted to cigarettes and alcohol to treat them, it's different. I know guys who, and you know, they don't tell you, but for any time somebody walks into my office, I can tell if they're abusing alcohol or cigarettes. You can tell. You're trained to do that. So when somebody sits in front of me and they're not telling you the truth, mm -hmm. but you're treating them, and after a while they come and they tell you, you know, well, this thing I work in the way it's supposed to work. I say, yeah, because you're drinking too much. But I don't drink that much. I say, stop right there. When last you had a drink? Well, about two hours ago. Mm -hmm. I say, and how often do you drink and what do you drink? Now, you could be drinking, but it's what you're drinking. It's what you drink. There are certain alcohol that will cut you in. As I say, cut you in it here. Mm -hmm. There are certain alcohol that, that becomes sweeter than sex, you know. Mm -hmm. Because of that addictive nature of the drug. And it is a poison you're putting into your system. When you're putting a poison into your system, you're going to hurt yourself. The very same thing with nicotine. 
Now, you may not be a smoker, but you work in an environment where everyone is smoking. You think you're not going to absorb that nicotine through your skin? Mm. You are. So you have to look at those factors. That's why persons who work, who work in the petrochemical industry, mm. persons who work in point leases, mm. they are susceptible mm. to erectile dysfunction. Mm. So that's why you can have erectile dysfunction, as this gentleman has asked. It may be something that you're doing to abuse yourself. And when you abuse yourself, you have a nice stiff erection before you go to have intercourse. And while having intercourse, it starts to get soft. You're not producing enough blood for what you have. Remember, we don't have any reservoir of blood anywhere in our body. Eh? Right. And if you have a penis, let's say your penis in the flaccid state is four inches. And when you get an erection, it is nine inches. Where are you getting the extra blood from? Where are you getting the extra blood from? The blood moves from here down there. You know, they tell you when you go by the beach, don't eat and go into the water. You'll get cramped. Yeah. That's because food, to be digested, blood has to move to the stomach area. So you can get cramped because more blood moves to the stomach area to, cut, to, to, to get into this digestive mode. The very same thing with sex. More blood has to go into the pelvic area, go into the penis to keep that erection to have sex. But you wouldn't be thinking right because you don't have enough blood to function here. And if you need the blood to move to other parts of the body because you might be, let's say, for example, you work, you work out a lot. So you need that blood to pump to your heart and, and other parts of your body and whatnot. You're going to lose your erection, especially if you are overendowed. And that's what a lot of guys don't understand. You don't have a reservoir of blood anywhere in your body. Blood has to move from different parts. So I hope that answered that question. Next question. Well, this person says, okay. What should a male in his 50s do if he uses hypertension medication and he has no heart erection problem? Diabetes is not a factor from anonymous. Once you are using drugs, there are side effects. If you listen to the advertisements, no, one of the wrong things that they do, they advertise drugs. Like if you could go to tell the doctor, and they tell you, you know, when you go to the doctor, ask him for so and so drugs. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Yeah. We live in an upside down world, you. <laughs> but if you listen to the side effects of all the drugs, because I have to list it at the end of the, 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 the advertisement, you'll always see ED there. Erectile dysfunction. Oh. Especially if it is a drug for diabetes, um, hypertension, sorry. If it is a drug for hypertension, expect that you're going to have erectile dysfunction in one way or the other. And if you're having problems with using a drug for hypertension and you're having issues with your erection, you have to know how to counteract that without stopping the drug. So there are ways and means to do it. It's not 100% effective, but it's going to cause changes that you are going to live with. Mm. Like everything else, you have to adjust to live. For example, if you have diabetes, you have to adjust your life yeah. to suit it. You can't be doing the same things that you used to do before. Mm. It's the very same thing with hypertension. So don't expect that you're going to have that nice foam erection every morning when you wake up, because it's going to affect the quality of your erection. And the longevity of your erection. So there are challenges that you face as you age, as you get different diseases and whatnot. Especially chronic diseases. But it's not a life sentence. If you go to the right person, well, there's only one right person in Trinidad, which is me. <laughs> if you go to the right person to deal with erectile dysfunction and sexual dysfunction, I will tell you what to do. But don't expect a miracle. There's no magic one that I have that I'm going to do abracadabra fufu -fu, and it's going to raise it. <laughs> that don't happen, you know. <laughs> yeah. Although people want that, mm -hmm. I don't do that. Because many a times a person will come by me and say, Dr. Raj, you know, I'm going to put on some work this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be with this nice woman, boy. Oh, God, give me something to use. My answer is no. Because if I give you something to use and you go there and fail, you feel you're going to blame yourself? <laughs> you're going to blame Dr. Raj. Dr. Raj don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's better I tell you no and you go and take your chances than I tell you yes, you so and so and so and it will work. And then you blame me. Mm -mm, I'm not in that. <laughs> My reputation is much, much more than that. I agree. That's why I tell people, 
You know, um, people say I manage something. I'm not managing. I'm forthright. I'm very forthright. I'm very assertive. Very, very assertive. But very forthright. And I grew up that way. I conditioned myself to be that way. I am not rough. I am not I am not I, I, I don't try to impose, but I'm very insert, assertive with what I say. That's why I tell people challenge what I say. Everything that I've said here tonight in the last 48 minutes, everything that I've said, well, 40 minutes, I dare you to challenge it. Tell me I've said something wrong because I'm sure of what I'm saying because I deal with it every day. I know what I'm saying. So when somebody comes and sit in front of me and they tell me they have Googled it and Google tell them this, that and the other, I said, I am, my, my years of training and my years of getting my degree and my PhD and whatnot, Google had nothing to do with that, you know. Your Googling have nothing to do with my education, you know, mister. Mm. So if you want to follow Google, yeah. by all means, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. But I am not going to match what you read on Google to what I know professionally. Are there instances where people um, use these um, genetic drugs, if I should call it that, or generic drugs, and, um, and um, um, feel to be to rebound? Yeah, of course. Wow. Of course. What I can I can give you a lot of instances of that. What happens to people who reach to that stage? Um, what happens to them? What, what, do, what kind of mindset do they, um, they put into and how does that affect them? Well, once, I don't like to use the word impotence, and many a times a client will come and say, well, I'm impotent. Don't use that word. Mm -hmm. Impotence gives the connotation that there's no coming back. Right. When you have reached that level of um, damage to yourself, where it brings about impotence, mm -hmm. you have to live with that now, psychologically. You can't feel that you're a man anymore. How could mm -hmm. you feel you're a man when you're impotent? So you are a different person. That's why it leads to depression, suicide. Um, guys trip off. They become introverted. Some end up in the streets. Huh? Some end up in the streets, eh? Yeah. Yeah. There are many. Don't just look at a person who is living on the street and think that they don't have something behind that. There's a foundation behind it. There's always a foundation. Is that a mental? Mental, physical, emotional. Ta a tabanka is a terrible thing, you know, of David. Of course, I know. I... Tabanka is a high state of depression. You know? hmm. One of the things you find with depression is that people ignore it until it leads to suicide and then everybody wants to help you. Yeah. If I didn't know God, I would have helped out that man. I would have... But when the person is depressed, you want to have nothing to do with them. We have funny society, you know, yes, funny world you live in. Of course, of course. When you hear a person commit suicide, you condemn them, you do all kind of thing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. From a spiritual point, I don't believe in, in suicide. Neither Based on my spirituality, I know that you, were, you didn't come here to take your own life. That's right. I know that. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things I don't do. If, I, if, you, if you commit suicide, do I expect me to come to your wake or your funeral? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. Right. Right? I but I understand same. why people do it. Yeah. So some will say, well, if you understand why people do it, why do you behave with, from a spiritual standpoint, I don't think you should reach there. Because there's always avenue to, for you to reach out. Yeah. And there's always avenue for you to find a cure for yourself. Because we have it within ourselves to do that. That's why we're called human beings. Mm -hmm. So if you are this higher, more intelligent being, why couldn't you find a way out of it? It means that there's some sort of weakness. And we all have weaknesses. But it's not that I, I, I don't associate with that. That's just who I am. And if I offend anyone, I apologize, but that's who I am. Right? So, but I do understand why people do it. And I think if a person is in that state, others should be reaching out to that person to help them as much as they could. Sometimes it's difficult, especially, like there's a guy in San Fernando. And one man has come to court, has been very ill. And he came up to the taxi stand there. He was having a big conversation about she. And, you know, you can see it's a tabanka that sent him on the street. Um, 
handsome. Then I don't think you can talk to people like that in a marriage. They're so hurt. And they, so, they have given up all hope. I think, I think, geez, it's very difficult to reach out to somebody like that. That person has, has to be very close to you. Or, or, I don't know. It's not an easy thing to reach out to a person like that. Mm -hmm. It is not. There is no clear cut way. Yeah. That, again, the manual isn't there. Because persons try, I've seen persons who are going through depression and you try with them from one angle and it doesn't work and then you have to try another angle and there are the many things that you have to do. There are some persons who have some sort of mental defect and they themselves don't recognize it and they don't want help. And they think that they're normal. Yeah. But they're creating havoc within their own family, within society and they don't even realize it. That's what, sometimes fanaticism is a part of mental disease. If you're fanatical about things, you see that's where again, if you are in in religion, if you are religious, right, and a fanatical religious person will follow whatever somebody tells you, but a person who is spiritual will see the truth and follow the truth, and this is the difference that we are as human beings. If you understand what is truth, and if you understand that even though my religion or my belief is telling me that I should be doing this. Or some, some persons are doing this on behalf of the religion. And you know that is not the truth. That is not the way. That is not the way it's supposed to be done. You have to stand up and say that is not the way. Even if you're a voice of one. Mahatma Gandhi said that even if you're a voice of one. When you speak the truth. The truth is the truth. There's no change to that. The truth don't deviate. Falsehood deviate all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but truth don't deviate. Yes. So if you, are a, if, if you are a person of one. Believing in the truth. No matter who, all those who are wrong, you who are believing in something that is false, the hell was with them. To put it bluntly. Pleasant good evening to Cutie Pie. So let's see, where are we? Where are we? We are looking at. Um, okay, that person says that they will be tuning. Mm -hmm. Ah, Dr. Raj, thanks for the polycystic ovarian treatment for my girlfriend. We have a baby boy. He's two years old. And this is something that we do also at the Adult Therapy Center. We have worked with many women who have had polycystic ovar ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovaries, persons who have en endometriosis or even cysts in the fallopian tubes and all those things. We have a treatment for that. We have a cure for it. And we have, I have had many successes with that with a lot of women who have become pregnant and have had a full-term pregnancy now you can become pregnant with polycystic ovaries but the problem is carrying it to the full term mm. that's where the challenges lies mm. so we deal with that also and there are many persons out there who have named their children after me because they say because of you we have had a child and i am thankful that i was placed on this earth to be able to help people to bring forth a child in this world oh, yes. that they can pull it. Many a times they come to my office and say, I want you to take out a picture of my child. Mm -hmm. Recently, there's a young lady from South, um, and she and her husband has been coming me, to me for years. And they finally had a baby recently, and she brought the baby to, for me to see last month. Mm -hmm. And I felt so proud. Yeah. I felt so proud. <laughs> um, it's a sense of a, accomplishment, a, achievement. It's, it's not like, uh, this is not knocking anyone, but it's not like, you are a medical doctor who deals with these things and it's you, there's no challenge. Person come by you, they want to get pregnant, you tell them what to do and they get pregnant. No, the challenges are there when a person has polycystic ovaries, when a man has a loose sperm count. You have to build that up. You have to be able to tell them what to do, show them what they should be doing, how they should be going about doing it. And then when they are prepared to have a child, a good friend of mine, you know, once, I didn't see him for about two years. And one day I, I walked outside to the store part of it and I saw him in the store. I say, how are you going? He say, everything good. He say, you wondering why you see me for all these years? He say, I have a child now, you know. Yeah. He said, I have to bring a young man to show you. Because yeah. only because of you. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that gives you a sense of, a sense of accomplishment. Tell me something. Um, at what age in a man's life um, that low sperm count um, start to develop? There's no age. Mm -hmm. You can have low sperm count from a very young age. You can have low sperm count um, throughout your life and you don't know it 
there is no development of low sperm count. As a matter of fact, you could be 75 years of age and bring forth a child into the world. Mm -hmm. And it has happened many times. I remember my oldest client was 84 years of age and he had a two-year-old child. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> now, some person might question that and say, you sure it's his? But mm -hmm. man, it's his, it's his. But the point is, is that throughout your life, you have to be able to monitor these things. Sometimes you're producing sperm, but they're not li alive. Sometimes you're producing sperm, the mortality rate of it is not good. There's not enough liquefaction. Hmm. So there are many factors that you have to look at. So the challenges is not, you know, I have had persons come to me and say, I'm trying to get my girlfriend pregnant, but she again pregnant. But I know for a fact that I had two women pregnant and they threw it away. I say, well, there's something called karma or say. Mm -hmm. That when you do those things, when you really need it, you can't get it. It's true. So you have to take that into consideration. There are many women out there, and I'll tell you something. There are many young girls out there who have had backyard abortion. Mm -hmm. Even if they go to the pharmacy and buy a tablet to take, to have an abortion, it's a backyard abortion. It's mm -hmm. not an abortion done by a doctor in a regimented way, which is still illegal, but there are doctors who do that. Yeah. Let's face the truth. Yeah. When you do a backyard abortion and you do a few of those in your life, you think you're going to have a child easily? If you are scarred to see in your womb? But they don't tell your boyfriend that. They don't tell your man that when they get married, that I throw away two children already. So you're wondering why you can't have children? So there are many factors that I have to look at. Sometimes I have to pull the, the wife aside and ask them a certain question, pull the husband aside and ask him a certain question. Just as how a deputy is essential in Trinidad. There are many men and women out there who have had sexual relationships prior and there are things that they did. There are those who have had STDs that will cause you to have loose sperm count. There's also those who have got, who had rubella mumps and it went down there to the glands down there and they can't produce any sperm anymore. Yes, right. So your mother is supposed to be telling you that as a young man hmm. that you had mumps. There are many young men who come to me and afterwards I tell them, I say, go find out from your mother if she's still alive your grandmother, because the women tend to remember these things. Men don't remember it. Find out if you ever had mums, and they'll come back with their head scratching and say, oh God, you have a mother and I had mums. Well, so well, that's why you have no sperm. Some of them pick up a STD somewhere along the line. Yeah. So, STDs kill sperm. Infection kills sperm. Prostate problem kills sperm. Urine in your, urine in your tract kills sperm. That's why there's a valve that locks off the urine for when you're ejaculating. Whatever you can't pee. You're, not you can't pee. You're not supposed to pee when you have an erection because you'll weaken the valve. You know some guys like to have sex and pee <laughs> while having sex. Yeah. That's not a good practice. Hmm. There are certain things that are not good. But again, as an expert, we can tell you that. And you will tell me with a practical sense. Well, I just do that. That that what I mean. Yes. It's a bother anyway, it's not a good thing. Can these, um, the, the people will um, complain about low sperm count at a, an age when they think they should be um, up and ready like Freddy, can that be turned around? Yes, I do that all the time. Yeah? Of course. Mm -hmm. There's a there whole grouping of things in the sex business, in the adult treatment business that could be turned around you if done rightly but if you try to self-diagnose and go on biting willy-nilly you can make it worse for yourself mm. that's why i warn persons there's one particular drug that all men love to use it mm -hmm. now in hindu philosophy anything that has gra in it is not good mm -hmm. if it's a gra mm -hmm. it's not good mm -hmm. and most good. of these pro those <laughs> no no that's just very serious you know? yeah. most of these product product comes out of india and the last three letters that's last three syllable that syllable mm -hmm. is gra <laughs> i never understand what you say <laughs> yeah hmm. you know in my in my travels I meet all kind of people and I met a gentleman last month that blew my mind you know. his job is to name items name things 
He names cars, he names drugs, he names all that. He named Viagra. Mm. He named it. Yeah. His company and him. That's what he does. Mm. And when this man tells me the things that he does name, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. And he has a big business. So he has six, six branches worldwide here. Mm. Naming products, you know. Mm. Sophisticated gentleman, you know. Yeah. But his, his role in life is to name products. Companies from all over the world hire his company to name a product. He named PDD, rename him. Mm-hmm. He said, Puff Daddy wouldn't work for him, man. PDD. Mm-hmm. When the man started to call out things that he named, people he named, rename. He's like the godfather out there. Mm-hmm. That's renaming. And I had a long chat with this. I met him through a friend of mine. and yeah. I was blown away by, by the things that he was telling me. Mm-hmm. There are certain brands that car, he named all the cars. Every one of them guys like a child, he named them. Yeah. <laughs> so, just an aside. Um, so, where are we? Let's take a break. Yeah. You, you have been talking for over an hour, you know? No, it's interesting. When it's interesting, I wouldn't take a break. <laughs> yeah, why need a break? I have to wet my whistle. I, 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 come on, man. Well, now we can take a break. <laughs> but... I need to know things too, you know, Raj. <laughs> yeah, but oh God. <laughs> <laughs> There's more on the other side of these people. Looking for the best Christmas recipes to make your holiday sparkle? Well, we got you covered with our Power Christmas recipes here on Power 102. All part of our 12 weeks of Christmas. Sorry. Oh my goodness. I love sorry. From a true tree black cake to pastels, always at the top of the list. Ups and hands with some chow chow is an absolute must. Sorrel, ginger beer, punch the gram, festive rice, and so many more mouthwatering. I will ones. answer you when I get back for Best bit of Christmas. Pastels. Get excited for Christmas with these festive treats. It's the Power Christmas recipes on Power 102. Heard weekdays, twice daily at 10 30 and 2 30 p.m. Allow the ham to cool. Don't pick at it. Let's start counting down with days to Christmas here on Power 102. Don't pick at it. Hosting a free clinic at Fabinger Expo on November 4th for all flood victims. Finally, the Indian Star Expo at the Big Tent Opposite Center of Excellence Makoya opens to the public from Monday 29th October until 11th November. Just arrive brand new goods with the latest variety of ready made garments and many more. Attraction of the year New European style furniture from Jodhpur, India. So, make your way to Indian Star Expo at the White Tent Opposite Center of Excellence Makoya. Opens 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. until the one. The biggest optical event in the islands. Upgrade you, a value optical frame festival event. Flip some new specs without emptying your pockets. Get discounts of up to 30% off complete purchase and a chance to have your purchase free. Be a star with styles from Swarovski, Covergirl, Oakland, and more. Upgrade you, upgrade to value optical. Caring for your eyes. Conditions apply, see press online or in store for details. Can you carry that key? Yeah. Yes, it's Power 102.1 FM's Beyond Karaoke Competition. Every Thursday, think you can sing better than the average show? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Share your talent, get up close and personal with Gail Ann and the ultimate DJ Shane every Thursday from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. at a popular karaoke location. Lots of fun and prizes to be won. Beyond Karaoke starts Thursday, November 8th at the Rush Bar Lounge. Take a replay. Beyond Karaoke, right here on Power 102, empowering you. Your car is for you to enjoy, and many victims of car theft feel helpless at that dreadful moment, not knowing if their car will ever be recovered. Don't let this happen to you. Get car safe from Air Support Tactical Security. They maintain a 100% recovery rate using their military trained response teams and advanced online tracking solution. Call Air Support today at 235 5477 or visit them on Facebook at Air Support GPS. Air Support GPS for peace of mind. November. November. It's a November to remember. 
Rumble on Saturday, 10th of November. Let's relive the greater eras of the 70s, 80s, and the 90s. And the Moonlight and Bob is the main of the Rumble from 10 p.m. Party with the legendary Chris Boyd and the Golden Charles. The Charles. On November, to remember, dance to the classics, relive the good times. Initial six days before 11 30 p.m. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas on Power 102 with our 12 weeks of Christmas. We're bringing you lots of joy and holiday cheer with our fun features and opportunities to win fantastic prizes for you and the family. Listen out for our tree traditions, the Power Minute to Win, tree recipes, Power Paran Line, Christmas classics, and our picture perfect Christmas to name a few. You'll be wrapped up in the warmth of this festive season with Power 102's 12 Weeks of Christmas. Access info about our giveaways and more on Power 102 and online at power102fm.com or any of our digital platforms. <laughs> the 12 Weeks of Christmas is on Power 102, empowering you. This is us. Oh yes, be part of it, people. 12 Weeks of Christmas right here at Power 102.1 FM. Sexplosion Thursday continues with Dr. Ash. For those of you who've heard the answer to your question, just simply send a thank you or yeah. I like the answer or I don't like the answer, I want some more information. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you're listening. <laughs> Sometimes people send me... Um, some people send me messages, but yeah. I don't know if they heard the answer. True. So all you need to do is tell me if you've heard the answer, if you like the answer, if you don't like the answer, or if you need more information. Yes, yes. And someone asked the question, how long after coming off birth control you can get pregnant? You can get pregnant the next month hmm. after, once you have had a period. Does that help? It is that close. Some, but it's normally three to six months after. Side effects with that. Though. But yeah, lots of side effects to that. Everything, oh, come on, you, you are the, taking at the, at something. Ratio, at the ratio of um, everyone goes through different side effects. Yeah. Um, some persons put on weight. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there, there are side effects because you're dealing with you're dealing with messing with the hormones in your body. Yeah. And once you're messing with the hormones in your body, you're going to have problems. Mm -hmm. So, David, yes, and it's not Junior, it's David McIntyre. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mac Daddy. Yes. <laughs> Junior is on a Friday. Good. <laughs> Mac Daddy is on a Thursday. Although he kept me going for an hour and something, I need him give me a break, but that's okay. <laughs> but that was very important information. Even. Usha from New York, Clara is locked on. Usha, Kavita, thank you very much for the um, compliment. Uh, let's see, let's see. So, for those of you, if you have heard your answers, please let me know. Um, need some information on natural remedy for ED. Well, Mukesh... Before, before you continue, uh, finish reading. Then Mukesh, I can't tell you what's the natural remedy for ED mm -hmm. because I don't know what caused your ED. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, you have diabetes and you have ED. There's no natural remedy for that, you know. Hmm. And they go hand in hand kind of way. You know? Of course. Yeah. So when you're asking for a natural remedy for ED, what do you mean? It's like when somebody asks for a natural remedy to make your penis grow... Um, bigger. Yeah. There's a there's a natural remedy for that, you know. Mm. Get a bag of bees or jet, <laughs> put your penis in it, <laughs> and know that that is a serious thing. Yeah. And get stung by it, <laughs> and <laughs> do that repeatedly for a few months. <laughs> do you want to do it? <laughs> At all. No, but it was some funny. But that is the natural way for you to develop your penis. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, man, all who want to jump on that boat. Have a nice time on that bad one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that is a slow boat to Tobago. Yeah. That's madness. So when persons ask those kind of questions, I have yeah. to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I give an answer, like how I just give an answer about that, yeah. which is truthful. Yeah, that's true. But it is dangerous to your health if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But if I don't know what is the cause of your problem, how could I give you a natural remedy? Exactly. It goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you that. Um, well, let's have a madman on the um, internet and see people be sharing it. I, I can't understand. This man is so stupid and, and, and crazy. 
He's just saying all kind of crazy thing, doing all kind of stupid thing, and people are sharing. But people are very, very. Dumb, but I can't understand why people are sharing. Even, even today on, somebody from this station shared it. <laughs> you saw it no. on our, our our group chat. Uh, chat? No, I haven't checked it out. If you don't have me, so. And I wanted to ask Chris, what's wrong with you? Why are you sharing this kind of crap? <laughs> it is not even entertaining. <laughs> Honestly. Why are you sharing something that is crazy? Mm -hmm. That could be detrimental to other people. That person was on the air here. Mm -hmm. And I heard him said one day that if a person is constipated, take two cocaine broom, you know mm -hmm. the cocaine broom, yeah. and swizzle it in the backside. <laughs> you can imagine what will happen to that child if that thing breaks inside it. I tell you, that's madness. But those are the kind of mad people we have here. But you have to be kind of... But don't, like, he just give natural remedy. That's the name of his business. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you, right? That women who Dolly, off, how are you? Women who come off the, the, the pill, like you said, and can get pregnant um, within a month or... No. Oh. It usually takes three to six months. Okay. But I know of instances where a person, after their first period, have gotten pregnant. And Two does weeks that after. have any kind of effect on the baby? No. No, no, no. It's no. normal. Uh, it would would not have too much. Uh, it would not have detrimental effect on the baby. Okay. No. Okay. no. Once a person is producing good eggs, mm -hmm. no. Mukesh, it's never not. It's never for me. Mm -hmm. That's the funny thing about this industry. Eh? <laughs> a person will come and ask you a question, but it's never for them. It's always <laughs> for a partner of mine. Yeah. <laughs> they think they can fool me. <laughs> It is always for a friend of mine. Yeah. A partner of mine. Yeah, like buying condoms back in the days. Yeah. I ain't buying the condom for me. I'm yeah. buying it for a partner of mine. Yeah. But you should be proud that you're having sex. Of course. I can remember the first time I went to buy condom. Um, not the first time I went to buy condom. The first time I went to buy condom and I got a negative look from the woman. Yeah. I tell the woman, I say, hey, but I'm having sex, you know, like you ain't having none. <laughs> and I wouldn't tell you what was my age, eh? <laughs> I tell her that. I say, you could skin up your face how much you want. I have insects. <laughs> I'm happy. I tell you. But you know, I always thought about that. I I, um, I never had believed in, you know, um, like um, these um, tablets and injections that people take not to have children. Well, it's I a, mean, it's a it's form like, of birth control. Mm -hmm. Um... For some women, it's very safe. So for some women, it's not. Mm -hmm. For some women, they go through naturally with it. And as soon as they come off, a month or two after, boom, they get, married, they get pregnant. Does that interfere with the menstrual flow? Of course, it, 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 it regulates everything. Mm -hmm. Women who have polycystic ovaries, they put them on birth control tablets to help them with that. Because mm -hmm. some of them uh, have a perpetual bleeding. Mm -hmm. So there are different reasons for doing it. But like everything else, that's why I find it's very irresponsible for any two adults who know that they're going to engage in sexual activity not to have a condom, you know? And there's nothing wrong with a girl having a condom, you know? mm -hmm. Because if your man say he have one, pull out one and hand it to him, say, hey, well, I have. Yes. I am not taking chances. Mm -hmm. Because pregnancies is... People take pre pregnancies to be a joke. Mm -hmm. It is not. There, there are persons yeah. who are getting pregnant at the drop of a hat. If the wind blow too hard, they get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And there are persons who are Doing everything possible in this world to get a child. That's true. Hmm. And I know people who have gone past a, a certain uh, age. And it seems as though they... I don't know they're, they're trying and it's not happening. Well, age is a factor. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes, a lot of times, the men will blame the woman for not having a child. Mm -hmm. Or not getting pregnant, sorry. Mm -hmm. And it is their fault. And the men, they're so egotistical. I'm yeah. not going to my Dr. Raj and get tested. You're mad or what? That can happen to me. That can happen to me. Me, I, I have about three children outside. Yeah. I none of them is yours. I, I can't. Somebody fool them and tell them is yours. I can't real bullets. We kind of blank. So what can I think him and say? Yeah. Because it's an ego thing. Mm -hmm. The minute you are, you, someone, and they, it, they think that you're questioning their manhood. But it's not their manhood. It is their ability to reproduce. Mm -hmm. It is not the ability to have sex, you know. Having sex does not guarantee you'll have a child. Yeah. And this is where we get tied up. We think that if we are if we're able to break, we could have a child. No, it's, it doesn't work that way. Hmm. And especially living in an age... Okay, for example. We have a lot of electronic devices. And our electronic devices go around our pelvic area. Mm -hmm. You don't ever see anybody taking a phone and put it in their pocket. So. Mm -hmm. That is very rare. Mm -hmm. 
Half of the time we don't have shirt pockets anymore. Yeah, yeah. It always goes in a pants pocket. It always goes in the front. It always, some fellas run it, drive it, they stick it under their balls. Mm -hmm. That is not a good thing. Hmm. That is going to affect you. Now, it will affect, it might affect one person more than the other. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it will affect you. Okay, we have a call. Bro. Okay, we have a call. us back at 228 Just in case you want to interact with us here. Yeah, you know, I, I always give that a serious thought. And Before then, cell phone came out, there was something very popular in Trinidad called a pager. Yes, the pager. We, we had Everybody a, had that on their waist. Yeah, right. But it was very close to your scrotum. Yeah. And you're, you're attracting radioactive waves to your body. Every person has a cell phone now, you know. Mm -hmm. Even a little child, you know. You know what that is going to do to people in the future? You know what person will become infertile? Hmm. Fertility rate is going to drop. And, and outside of cell phone, people have so much different gadgets now. Laptop. Yeah. iPad. You hear the name? Laptop. Yeah. It's made for your lap. Yeah. The heat from that will cook your balls. <laughs> Don't put it on your lap, fellas. <laughs> there are trays for that. They are, they, are, they are padding for it. Tablets and all this. Tablets. Yeah. We have it on our chest. Mm -hmm. I've seen women now have a new style now. They're sticking their cell phone in the bra. Right yeah, on, yeah, on yeah, yeah, right on the breast. And they left the breast to boot. Eh? Well, yeah. How are they really playing Russian roulette? Eh? They are. You are playing Russian roulette with anything mm -hmm. that you're doing delivering these, these electronic devices. Right, we have the caller back online. Good evening, caller. Hey, partner. Lodge man. Yeah? Lodge man, eh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I enjoy your program. Man. <laughs> Happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy the program. Oh, because... I I take a note of all what you're saying yeah. Yeah, Hello? You taking a note? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I listening. I right. listen. I, well, I that, put it in my, my computer brain. Well that yeah. is what the program is all about, for people to listen and take a note because it is very interesting. Yes. And, exactly. And person is supposed they're supposed to be educated by the program. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You see, because human beings Many of us, huh? I hear you, you use a word here tonight. You know, that whenever a, a person sees something and they cannot get it, you want to go mad away, what they call mm -hmm. madness? No, I am not going to do that. I compliment you. Hello, good morning. You look pretty, and I go on my way. That's me. Well, that's what you you're know. supposed to. Huh? That's what you're Hello? supposed to. Huh? Yeah. I just only compliment the individual, and I go on my way. Right? I have plenty of friends all about the place. Hello, good morning. How are you doing? Well, fine. I, I well today. But by the help of God, Everything is well with me. You pleasant, well? A pleasant okay, good evening to fine. Sadar. Yeah. You're, you're an idea. Thank right? you. Okay, let's All right, you take care. Do um, you know one thing I have to say? Uh, I, I was telling uh, my good friend over, um, DJ Smooth, mm -hmm. when I was asked to come back on radio by Ingrid Isaac, she asked me for certain concessions. and I said, no problem, I'll do it for you because she's the one who asked me on radio. But I always have to tell, remind people to thank Power 102. You know. The information that they get on Power 102 with this program, mm -hmm. you have to go by a doctor and pay for that. Thing. Of course. You have to go and pay for that, you know, to get it freely here, you know. Mm -hmm. The amount of persons we have treated on this program with the information that we have given out over the years, yeah, man, that you all should supposed to be very thankful to Power 102 mm -hmm. and the management of Power 102 and especially Ingrid Isaac. Yeah, yeah, no problem. For the years of having me on this radio station to do what I'm doing. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I told Smooth DJ Smooth is that I yeah. enjoy coming here and doing a program because I like informing people of things. I like giving information about things that are sexual, about your health, because I'm a sex educator. I believe in sex education. I strongly believe in sex education. I strongly believe in teaching people the right things on how they should be dealing with issues for themselves, how they should be um, 
taking care of themselves. So at the end of the day, they can make informed decisions. They can, if they want to have a child, they will know what to do. If they have an a, a issue with erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, same thing with morning erection. There are a lot of men who did not understand morning erection and why they get a morning erection, why they don't get a morning erection. And suddenly now they could start saying, well, wait a minute. If I'm not getting a morning erection, something is wrong with me. I need to check up on that. And there are things that you need to check on with your life. As you, as you age, as a person age, they need to check up and do certain things for themselves so that they have a better or they have a longer sex life, a better sex life. So again, keep the questions coming because for those of you who want to have your answers, this is the forum for it. Um, I know I have a few friends who are on. I said uh, evening to them already. Um, if you find the program is interesting, well, I'm happy that it is interesting for you. It's all about information, education, about things that are sexual. And we try to make it entertaining at times. That's why you always have a little banter between my co-host and myself. That is part of the entertainment, especially when I'm with Junior. You know, we have that banter going all the time and we, um, we, we, we make things about us. Sometimes we make it personal, but there's no hard feelings between us. And Cutie Pie, you know that. You know how we used to be at the studio here, so. You all part and parcel about, uh, of Sexplosion at one time. For those of you who are listening to Sexplosion for the very first time, of course, this is Sexplosion on Power 102. I am Dr. Raj. My clinic is at St. Augustine. We deal with all sexual dysfunction, all sorts of issues related to both male and female couples, persons who have issues with um, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, incompatibility with your partner, um, women who have polycystic ovaries, endometriosis, um, blockages, unable to get pregnant. We deal with every single thing when it comes to sexual, your sexual being and sexual dysfunction. And that's something that we are very proud of. We've been dealing with these things for the last 20 years at the Adult Therapy Center. First, we started off in Arapita Avenue, then we moved to St. James. And of course, now we're in St. Augustine at number 10 Camody Street in St. Augustine. And of course, the number there is 6459829 or 6454543. You can call. As a matter of fact, the business is open until 11. If you want to call to make an appointment to see me, to come to get treatment for anything, you can call, make an appointment. Um, I work Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. I don't work on a Wednesday. Um, set your appointment, come in. Bring whatever information you have. If you've seen someone for, let's say, for example, for pregnancy issues, and you have done um, semen analysis and other things, ultrasound and whatnot, bring all the information. Do not leave the information at home and come and see me because it doesn't make sense. I, I don't like people spending unnecessary money, so I wouldn't want to send you to do a test that you have done already. So if you have done tests, bring the tests. We'll take a look at it. We determine what's wrong, what can be done, the period of time that you have to go through the treatment, and we work from there. And it's the best way to work with things. Um, Dr. Raj, my lady stopped smoking and she's getting a lot of button on her face and it's adding a lot of weight, hormonal imbalance because she stopped smoking. Uh, my lady squirts a lot and is it safe to lick it? Well, squirting is a combination of fluids from the body. Once she doesn't have a STD or STI, it's, the, it's safe to party. You can lick it, you can suck it, you can drink it, you can do whatever you want. Squirting is a mixture of bodily fluids. And sometimes it does have urine in it, so you have to be careful with that if you have an aversion to it. Pleasant good evening to Jennifer. And my friend Eric says, I accept your answer very helpful. I can take him out. That has to do with the guy who has lost his sight due to, due to diabetes. Hmm. You back? Yes. The Mac is back. <laughs> so I was just explaining to the listeners out there that, you know, if they need to um, come to the Adult Therapy Center, what they need to do. Yeah, we have a caller coming in here. Let's see who it is. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Yes, good evening, brother. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, good evening. Good evening. This is Dr. Raj speaking. Are you there with you? 
Yeah, yeah Dr. Yes. Dr. Raj is the host. I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Raj is about 15 years ago I came to you in St. Augustine. Uh huh. And I have a problem with, like you're talking about, um, um, when you're a diabetic, what can happen to you? Yes. Um, well, I want, could I get your office number so I just come and speak to you privately? Sure, 645 hold, hold on, hold Yes, 645 Yes, that's right. Okay. Dr. Raj, Dr. Raj, the information you given there, on the air there, as you have just said, mm. if, the, if the amount of money, if, people, if you're not there, and the amount of information you give, people really have to go to a doctor and the kind of money they will spend. Mm. And they mightn't even get... No, they will not get all that information and, because... And that's what I'm not, 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 not saying. Yes. And you still, the information they're giving you, you, you will take it, but you, don't, you will be taking it, and you're not too sure if it will work. Mm. Because I had you listen to you, you are ready, and it helped, but if you want to see, well, to come out here to your, where your place is, was, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And now it gets more difficult with me now. Mm -hmm. uh, I will have a, 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 a knee problem then. Right. Mm. But 15 years ago is a long time, eh? you know, you're supposed to... Keep your body working in a particular way. Yeah, there are yeah, things yeah. that you're supposed I, I do, to do every I do year. That, but really, to be honest with you, and then come beginning of this year, you know, my wife passed away. Oh, oh my condolences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she she was just 56 years, a massive heart attack. Oh my God. So I'm going through a lot of problems. And then about three years ago, in 2015, my son gets in an accident, and he he lost his right leg. Oh my God. So all that is. It's working yeah. in your mentally. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So when you have this kind of problem where with your sex life, then it, it all it humbugs you. Then. So I I think uh, during the week I will call you. It's six four five four five four three forty five forty three forty five forty three. Yes. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay, we have another call. You. Good evening. Hello, are you there? Hello. Yes, good evening. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, good evening, brother. Good evening. Good afternoon, Dr. Raj. Yes. Good afternoon, Dr. Raj. I want to know what is the, um, what salt and metal does to phosphorus? Well, I was just about to answer that because somebody asked, Dr. Raj, what salt and metal do to you? It is good for the prostate. It is a natural remedy to keep the prostate in good work, working order. Working mm -hmm. order. Yes. Is that was special brand of salt metal? No, no, salt metal is salt They have different brands, and some might think that the more expensive brand is better than the cheaper brand. It all depends on the, the, the lab that it's made at. And, you know, sometimes they, you pay for the advertising as opposed to the product. Mm -hmm. But okay. basically, it's the same product. Okay, one question on that. Is this pressure is stolen? That you bring it down? If what? Your pressure is stolen. Swelling. A swollen yeah, prostate, if your prostate is your sexual gland. Yeah. A swollen prostate will cause erectile dysfunction, yes. Mm. Okay. But it's cell panorto been bringing on. The cell panorto with a what is your PSA? The PSA is 4.5. Well, yeah, the cell panorto should bring that down. How old are you? I'm 70. Do you have a history of um, prostate cancer in your family? Well, I don't know. Most of my family died already. Okay, well, um, that should bring it down. Use it for about three months and then do another PSA. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank yes. you very much. You're a no problem. Right. Okay, thank you. Is it normal for a diabetic to get urinary tract infection or UTI often? Yes. Yes. You know, I try to understand the links with uh, diabetes. Diabetes causes many different problems within your body. Mm -hmm. Circulation. The valves in your penis, the valves that control the flow of the blood, mm -hmm. weakens with diabetes. Mm -hmm. So you have blood flowing in at one pressure and flowing back out with another pressure. Sometimes the pressure with which it flows in is the same pressure by which it comes out, mm -hmm. which is not good for the erection. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. it when could it, cause... When it comes in the penis, it must stay there. 
it's supposed to stay for a period of time and build up. Yeah. That's why I tell you we have no reservoir of blood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are things about sex that are very logical, you know. But we use our illogical mind to, to, to try to figure it out. What kind of effects um, there will be on people's sex life, sex life when they use like insulin and stuff? Oh, that, then you have a serious problem. Hmm. Diabetic type 1 is a serious issue with erectile dysfunction. So people with type 1 use insulin? Type 2 is tablets. Oh. Type 1 is worse than type 2. Hmm. You have an open line? Yes. Good evening. Take down your volume. Yes, we hardly hear you. No? We're not hearing you. We're only hearing static. Yeah. Yeah. Take the volume down. All right. Good. I'm, I'm to tears. To tears. Three uh -huh. zero. I, I give you some on my face because you have my age to tears. You could use it at your age, of course. Hey? Yes, you can. Oh, he's fine. That's a noisy environment. Mm-hmm. So, so, so um, this ah, wait, wait. Good night, Dr. Raj. Should men get a morning erection every day? How do you mean? Yes, you should. <laughs> a healthy man would get a morning erection every day. <laughs> Rickard, how are you? My nephew's on. Rick, happy to see you on. Rick, Rick you're in Florida, right? So, um, it's a joy to realize that. It's nice when you turn and you get Chuck. You know your Chuck? Do I have to do chat? No. <laughs> that means to say the sleeper draws on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I If you're not sleeping on your chat, then. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but you know what? I have friends who, um, who suffer diabetes. You know, I'm, I'm always very concerned because I, I too know. I'm, a, I'm an addict to, to, to information. And sometimes I might be on the television late at night in the rest. Info, info. If I'm switching the, 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 the um, documentary channels and one of them is denoting like diabetes, trust me, I'm not going to sleep. You stop right there and you'll Yeah, I want to hear and I want to tell these same friends of mine because if I consider you a friend, right? I suppose we're able to, to, to advise you. tell you, you know? But there are some people who I kind of machoism take that. Well, that's what I'm telling you. They, 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 they're using insulin. That's why I ask you about insulin. The number one problem we have with men mm -hmm. is their ego in. Yeah. Women will come to the clinic mm -hmm. if they have an issue. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they can't come, mm -hmm. if they can't be penetrated, mm -hmm. if they're not enjoying sex with their husband or their boyfriend, they will come and tell you openly. Mm -hmm. A man finds it very difficult to come mm -hmm. and tell another man yeah. that his penis cannot stand up. Mm -hmm. So the ego steps in. Lots of time women come with their men threatening them, you know. Mm -hmm. Go and tell Dr. Raj what's wrong with you. Yeah. And they come and they sit down in the office. So mm -hmm. tell him. Well, you tell him that. Uh, you tell him. You go going through it. Mm -hmm. And it's an argument with two of them in front of me. And I say, okay, cool it. Eh? Well, if I have trust me, I better do it you. <laughs> oh, well, I, 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 believe, I believe in prevention more than cure. Of course, Dr. Raj. Of yeah, where's the prevent things from happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With information. Yes, Once you have the right information, you could prevent certain things from happening to you. Um, okay, we have that there. From calm sex to rough sex, I feel my penis feels bigger. Is that possible? Of course. It means rough sex is what turns you on more than calm sex. So rough sex will cause you to get a stronger, harder erection as opposed to just having sex normally. And that is normal with some men. I will, I will stand down and see. Okay. And what is the other question? Need answer about the smoking and weed. I just, I, I answered that question, maybe you weren't listening. If the person stops smoking and putting on weight and getting buttons on their faces because of a hormonal imbalance. Mm. And we treat that also. We have a, we have some very nice products for those things. Yeah. And for those of you who want to call, please don't call my cell phone while I'm yes, doing a program. Call us 222 or 612 That's where you call. 222 We have a text two, 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 you can 222 We have a text board up too. You can send your messages if yes. you want to call. And I will um, answer. But you know, Raj, I know I think I think some people, especially men, they don't play that 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 diabetes thing. I mean they don't want people to know. But I mean, 
it's better you confide in a good friend. Well, if we come to see you. Okay, for example, high cholesterol also causes erectile dysfunction, you know. High cholesterol. High explain, cholesterol. Explain when your cholesterol um, increases, mm -hmm. your triglyceride and your cholesterol and your, your low density hypotropics and those things increases, mm -hmm. it suppresses the production of testosterone. Anything suppresses the, the production of testosterone causes erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Because testosterone is what makes you a man. Mm -hmm. When persons ask me, what is testosterone? Testosterone is what makes a man a man. Mm -hmm. Men have testosterone, women have estrogen. Okay. So high levels of testosterone in a woman is an indication that you have a hormonal imbalance or she using drugs. Mm -hmm. Very high levels of testosterone in a man is an indication that he's using steroids. That's why athletes get catch, catch mm -hmm. using drugs. Mm -hmm. But low levels of testosterone. Now, you could take a testosterone test and it falls within the parameters of testosterone measurements. And a doctor will tell you it's, everything is all well and good with you, you know. But you know damn well that you're getting a good erection. A sexologist will tell you, eh-eh. The parameters under which you fall is within the range, but it's not good for you, your age. Mm -hmm. You need to be here as opposed to here. And we need to do this to bring you here. That's the difference between a sexologist mm -hmm. and a doctor. The guy we called a while ago says, says that he's um, 30 years old. Mm -hmm. And he has that problem. No, he didn't say you have a problem. He asked if he can use sal palmetto. Oh, okay. You don't have to have a problem to use sal palmetto. Oh, okay. I wanted keep to ask you that too. It keep you in good, good working order. So you can use it. Of course. Whether you have a complete or not. And African men are, have a propensity for yeah. prostate cancer. That's what I'm asking. So they should be using sal palmetto regularly. Mm -hmm. Like when you say regularly, what do you mean? If, it, if a guy who's lyman and stuff, I every day you take your sal palmetto. Mm -hmm. You take it before you go to bed. Oh. You take one capsule mm -hmm. before you go to bed. Yeah. And that's it. And you get checked after you pass the age of 35. You get checked once every two years. Mm -hmm. And when you pass the age of 50, you get checked every, once every year. I missed mine this year. And I'm, I'm trying to get And it. do both tests. Digital, with the finger, yeah. and by blood. Okay. Both. Because I had mine done at the... Uh, cancer society. Mm -hmm. uh, right? I was scared to go. And Don't I, be. And I was scared to go. Why feel you like it? Or? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, but <laughs> but that part of the business, I was saying, Jesus, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I have to go through this thing. But then I thought about it. I said, David, this concerns your health and your well-being. Have it done. Right when I had it done now, I had blood work and thing done also. So I, when I say, okay, Mr. McIntyre, yes, ma'am. Um, cancer Society, come to raise us. <laughs> You're afraid to go. <laughs> I took about two days to go for the research. Yeah, you had to build the courage. I called him and I said, it's ready, you know. <laughs> I said, my God, so I went and I was like... No, there's sweating. a fair factor. There's a fair factor. Yeah. When I said everything is okay, I, I take care of yourself. God, you just... Man, I couldn't wait to reach home. <laughs> I was just like happy knowing no, that. No, I do, I do, I, I personally, I, I mean, I practice what I preach. Mm -hmm. I do certain tests every six months or every three months. Yeah. I do a full blood work every three months. I haven't done mine, and it kind of bothered me, so I wanted to go. I do it, I go and do it. Yeah. I go and do it. Because of this, but I'll do it before the Christmas. No, I go and do it. I make sure I do it because it's my yeah. health and I have, to look at, I have to look after myself. Yeah. Um, if I need treatment for anything, like recently, I. Um, about three weeks ago, I was having some serious chest pains. Mm -hmm. And the morning when I went to the doctor, he buffed me up. He said, why didn't you check yourself into the hospital one time? I said, well, I didn't think it was hard. He said, well, you don't know. I said, no, but I didn't think it was hard. Mm -hmm. Well, I was hoping it wasn't hard. Yeah. And did my full blood work somewhat, and it was a congestion on my chest. The atmosphere is so toxic now. Yeah, well, I, well, I remember I travel a lot too, and yeah. I, aircraft is a dirty thing, you know. Hmm. Aircraft is a nasty thing, you know, not dirty, you know. Hmm. You don't believe how dirty inside an aircraft is being. You know? hmm. Germs like that, you know. When I sit down, I just be wiping down and all kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I know that. I, I, I know um, what will happen. I know you yeah, could get blood infection and toxic. different things. I mean, we, Viral infection. There's so much artificial drinks and eats and, and this and that and the other. So I get tested. I do all my STD, STI tests every, every, every three months also. Mm -hmm. I make sure I get tested. I, I work in a sex environment. You know? I know. 
So I have to test. I make sure I test myself. Mm -hmm. I go to the lab and I, they draw blood, mm -hmm. two vials of blood. Tell them to do all the tests and whatnot. Go back a week after, two weeks after, get all my results. Mm -hmm. Urine. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I have to go to my again. No, I, I don't make sense after that. I can't I, let this year finish without doing it. <laughs> I felt so good after the first result. I want to maintain that. Somebody <laughs> laughing at you when they say they might, you might really get to like it. <laughs> <laughs> so you going for tests every month. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's very, very important, especially guys who are under some sort of a, uh, a medical problem or physical problem. Well, medical problem, one medical problem breeds other medical problems. Cholesterol breeds other problems. But stress is a major factor. Yeah. And I try, I, I cannot live a stress-free life because I deal with people and their problems. Mm -hmm. So there's no way I could ever tell someone my life is stress-free. Because I sit out, down and listen to people's stress. Yeah, when I'm all stressed out, best looking thing could pass by. Don't bother me at all. That is the power of stress, I think. That can stress is a very serious issue. Yeah. But one of the th two things that I used to de-stress in the morning, I look at my plants. I like to plant plants mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I spend time with my cats. Yes. I love that. That yeah. de-stress. Cats de-stress you like that. You know? mm -hmm. Because you know... You, you don't own a cat. The cat owns you. <laughs> That's so true. So that distresses me a lot. Um, I like listening to music. Mm -hmm. I love listening to music. Certain types of music will put me in a different frame. Yeah. Um, there are things that I enjoy doing, and I make sure I do it as often as I could. Yeah. Country style environments. Country style too. rain. I love rain. Yeah, you wake up. I love listening to rain, air. watching rain, feeling rain. I, yeah. What we call the ball char. Mm -hmm. That when you know when rain is falling, that. Yeah. When the breeze passed through you in that spray. wetness, that, yeah. that spray, that thing, we yeah. call it a bow shower. Yeah. I love that. My cat love it also. <laughs> I have a cat. When the rain starts to fall, he runs and he goes and he sits down on a particular spot. But I bow shower to hit him. And he comes back wet. <laughs> Those cats are still like water. So. I tell you. <laughs> we had another cat that used to like to bathe. Honestly. True. Go and look for his bath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the water like that. Cat of free water, really. Yeah. <laughs> but not the cats that we have had. Yeah. But this one, he, he looks like to go and just sit and feel about charity to him. Dr. Raja, athletes who, um, outside of those who pump up the body and stuff and use steroids and things, guys who get injured on the, on the play field or off the field. And they, the use, they use steroids for rehabilitation also. That can, can be after because do you know why steroid was invented? Tell me. After World War I, mm -hmm. with the amount of soldiers that lost their legs and arms and whatnot, mm -hmm. To rehabilitate them, the Germans invented steroids. Mm -hmm. And that was helping people to cure faster. And then people started to abuse it in sports. Because mm -hmm. it made you superhuman. Yeah. Steroids make you superhuman. It does. The things that you can do on the steroids is... Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> we have known of athletes who have been caught using steroids and they were stripped of their gold medal and yeah, their yeah. records and all those things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it continues to happen. There are women who look like men playing sports in sports and you know yeah. that they can't be do, doing that naturally mm -hmm. but in a, in a, when, you, when you look at uh, cable TV um, to, to generalize what I want to say is that most of these um, are things that ask you to use something I'm talking about medication or prescriptions or whatever they always end it like um, see your doctor you know before you use it make sure you, 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 your heart and this and that and then they say side effects and, and they warn you about that, but that don't happen in the Caribbean. Well, they have to give you the warning, but they're not supposed to... They're not supposed to advertise drugs. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. I, I think that's a wrong. Okay. In America, you know, the things that people get away with mm -hmm. because of legislation and taking people to court and whatnot, mm -hmm. drugs are not supposed to be advertised. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't believe drugs are supposed to be advertised. But in the Caribbean, yeah, where everything is over the counter. All well, the, every, all, all prescription <laughs> drugs is over the counter. You know, Once you know the pharmacist. But in the, in the first world, they, they, there are certain things that don't sell over the counter. No, no. They, you, and you can't get rid of a prescription because they'll... Super, you see, they, super, though, super. they're jail and lock up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they get away scotch free here. You know, Excuse I, me. I, sometimes I, 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 um, I'm amazed at, 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 what, at what some people can get over the counter. Doctor? And, and they take it without... Well, that well, you see, again, we, we sell diagnose and we want to use things when we're not supposed to be using it. Or oh, a friend tell it to use it. I say, I use that and try it, my boy. Somebody talking about me again, hiccup. 
<laughs> so whatever this goes. Dr. Raj, go in the gym. Will it help my sex life? It always does. My nephew is 16 years old. I notice he got a huge penis. Does Jim does that? Well, maybe naturally so. Mm -hmm. At 16 years. Yeah. Testosterone is what actually causes your body to grow in the gym. If you have good levels of testosterone, there are certain, there are certain individuals who have good levels of testosterone, they develop faster than other persons. Okay. But if you take Performance enhancement drugs, nandrolone, decadurabolin, those kind of things, you are going to enhance your body, yes, but you'll pay the price later on in life. I heard some fellas uh, talk about stuff they buy in the drugs and they mix. Yeah. They do their own mix. Some of them are scientists. Mm -hmm. Some of them are scientists in their own rights. <laughs> in their own rights is right. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> when, when I know a few of them. They're not scientists out of their rights. <laughs> I know a few of them. I know a few of them who will advise you on how to mix what with what and mm -hmm. they have no medical background or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I listen to them. They just want to tell you what, what to do with this and I look at them and say, you have any idea what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And they're experts, you know. They are experts. You can't even question But them. they are experts with other people's body. Yeah. That's where the problem comes in. They're experts with other person's body. They will tell you what to use, how to use it, and whatever. They are using it, you know. Yeah. That's the truth. Hmm. So one of the things, and there's a, there's a book, there's a wonderful book called Death in the Locker Room, Bob Goldman. Death in the Locker Room. Death in the Locker Room. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to use drugs for bodybuilding or enhancement or for sports, read that book. Mm -hmm. You'll never touch it. Mm -hmm. Death in the Locker Room. They sell you death in a vial. Mm -hmm. That's scary stuff. Okay? It's a big business. Not scary, it's a big business. There are more money to be made from that than illicit drugs. Eh? Hmm. Crazy. The use of prescription drugs by persons who don't have the prescription of it is very, very big. Eh? There's a lot of money to be made. And no security. Steve has talking to all the time. The security girls, they say she tell me she got released by 7 o'clock. She go on. I couldn't tell Steve that. I just go there and say, boy, there's no security. So I go and see family come back. Right, talk about it. Good night, doctor. I am 40 years old, only sex one minute. What can I do to get more long? Well, if you have premature ejaculation, you got to go on a program to control your um, PC muscle and have control over your ejaculation. So what you need to do is come to the adult. That one you won't get for free on the air here. I could tell you that. That's proprietary to my clinic and myself. We invented that cure and it will remain with us. And the cure is different for each individual. So if you need to learn to last longer, you need to come to the Adult Therapy Center. Like I said, we give out a lot of free things on in air here, but that's one thing you wouldn't get from me for free. I know some of you like the free thing, you know, but they wouldn't support me otherwise. So premature ejaculation is a serious issue. Once you ejaculate before you satisfy yourself or your partner, once you think that you have not satisfied your partner, you feel cheated or you feel you have cheated the person, you have premature ejaculation. And it could come about from, from um, sensitivity to the penis or the inability to control your PC muscle, which is the pubococcygeal muscle, or a combination of both. And if that happens to you, well you will need to, well, you know what you need to do. 645-4543, call, make an appointment, come in, 
sit, have a chat with me. It has to do with your age, your ability, how long you have in sex, how often you have sex, and how quickly you ejaculate. Any person who ejaculate in less than five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and unable to satisfy their partner, now there's some women who could come in five minutes, but if you are unable to satisfy your partner because you ejaculated quickly, it's because you have premature ejaculation. It's called PE. Not physical education that you used to do in school. Eh? So, we're almost to the end of our program. For those of you who want to call in or send your text messages, you have approximately seven minutes to do so. Well, five minutes if you want to get your answers and all that in. So you can send in your questions. You can still make your comments. For those of you who did send your topics and questions, I thank you very much for that. It made the program livelier tonight. Yes. It gave us more. In, it gave me the incentive to yeah, talk man. more about things. I like people to challenge my brain. Yeah, and they wanted to think I break or anything was going so good. <laughs> because I too like to know, you know. Because I like to share. Therefore, yeah, but I need to. You, all I talk is. <laughs> I know. I am. I am. I am. I am. There are four little boys that I, I really check for in my area. And I tell them all kind of adult things. Because they're not two year olds. They're from like eight up. I won't, I won't go to the extreme. No, you don't go to the extreme. You know, but but I, I'll tell you something. I spend time with People them. ask you when you should be educating your child on sex mm -hmm. after three years of age. Mm -hmm. Start. Yeah. Tell them the right words. Yes. They don't want to know details, mm -hmm. but give them the right, correct information. Yes, 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 yes. And as soon as they ask, give them the correct information. Don't hide to give them information. Yeah. Something else came up here? Yeah, I've seen three other messages that come up here. Ooh, I didn't see that. I'm going to turn it away. Yeah. I have no problem with an erection, but I, I'm not sure if I get one every day. Mm -hmm. Should I be concerned if I'm not having any problem getting an erection? Well, if you're not getting a morning erection every day, it could be because of your sleep patterns. So there are a number of factors that you have to look at. Mm -hmm. It's not just, what one of the things that is an indicator is if you stop getting morning erection. Yes. Take that. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes. Dr. Yes, good evening. Good night. You said that um, when, you, um, when you have an erection and you pee, it is the worry of violence. Right? What, what does you do when you want to pee? I would like to know what you do when you have an erection. What? Okay, when you have an erection for sex, you're not supposed to pee. Right. Because if sperm mixes with, well, of course that will kill the sperm. No, no, no. no. And you don't want it to be happening regularly. No, no. If no, you no. wake up with a morning erection and you go to pee, come on, man, you're a man, you know how to push it down and you will start losing erection and you can start to pee? Mm -hmm. How old are you? It, 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 Oh God, man, you must know what to do. Push it down. <laughs> all right. And start to pee. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> what causes a man at the age of 40 still to have wet dreams? Wet yeah. dreams are caused by an individual having excessive amount of sperm and yeah. the body have to release it. It's called a nocturnal emission. Mm. Uh -huh. right, right. That's why we have wet dreams. Right, well, I've right. never had one in my life. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. You're welcome. <laughs> Wind, they, I've never had a wet dream in my life. True. Yeah, never. <laughs> never, never, never. And I know the reason for it, eh? But <laughs> <laughs> Your body will so absorb sperm yeah. after three days. And there are certain things that happen. <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm not of that ilk. <laughs> <laughs> Junior Saldena, how are you, my friend? Thanks to all you over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You have your chance tomorrow. Yes. Don't come into our program and disrupt anything. Eh? Yeah. We'll deal with you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let me bust your files here now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I know um, this rich source of uh, advice and information and stuff. Let's say that um, someone comes into your, your, your car, um, 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 Dr. Rat, hold on, man. Mm -hmm. and um, into your, your, the store on the, on the highway. Uh, hold on. And then they said that um, um, I came in here to buy something, but I heard you on the radio. Can they get advice from you? Of course. Yeah, Glenn. 
Of course, I have no problem in giving people advice. Sometimes I walk out into the store live, 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 live. And, and person see me and they call and they ask me questions yes. and I give them free advice. I believe in giving free advice to a point. If there are things that they have to do, they have to come to the clinic and register as a client, then it's different. But I give free advice all the time. If I've, I've been sitting here for 18 years giving free advice. Yeah, and I'm Don't you think I'd like to give free advice? <laughs> so all you need to do is ask me a question yeah, and I give you the call. answer. Yeah, of course, if it gets into the technical part of it, I don't. Okay, because then, uh, once it gets to the technical part, I don't give advice. Mm -hmm. Because uh, advice could be taken wrongly. Yeah, yeah. But simple advice I will give them. Mm -hmm. well, without, without the advice you will give if that happens is to come to your place. Well, that is the advice. The store is not the place for that. No. And there are some persons who go and put the card before the horse, they buy things and then ask for advice. Yeah, all that I'm talking about. Yeah. But I must check in this story. You know how much time that I encounter me. that? <laughs> Person buying things and then asking advice. Yes, that's crazy, man. <laughs> I don't I'm see like, that. I'm like, oh though. my God. Well, after you have to pull the curtains down for this evening. Uh, this one had me talking for an hour and <laughs> 10 minutes without <laughs> stopping it. <you know? laughs> Well, the man is filled with information. Well, I like when people bring the information yeah, out of me. I can't take, I can't watch the, the, the commercial billboard <laughs> and take one ranch. I want to know myself too. <laughs> I so, have a grandson, I have some little boys that I take care of, that I, I help to take care of, I should say. And I am willing to impart the knowledge to them. I want them to know. I don't want them to grow up and don't Hallelujah. be the to black me. <laughs> Good night, folks. Until tomorrow with Junior Saldenas. Check us at 9 for Sexplosion. Um, 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 Johnny Boy coming on just here. Yeah. Yeah.